One of the keys to mastering InDesign is understanding the wide range of projects you can tackle. At this early stage in the course, it would be good to get an idea of the creative scope that InDesign has to offer. From posters and business cards to booklets and social media graphics. In this video, we're diving into the common document types you can create. Now this is going to be a big one. After this, you'll have a good insight into the power of InDesign. So let's get into it. So in InDesign, depending on the type of project you want to create, you will be setting up and managing documents in multiple different ways. Before we get hands-on, I just want to quickly take you through some of the common print and digital documents you may work on when using InDesign and the different ways pages can be applied. Here, we're going to start off with some really simple documents and then see how things can get a little bit more complex. So here I have a document that shows a quick overview of the main types of documents you can create in InDesign. If you want to open this document to follow along with me, you can find it in the downloadable course folder that comes with this course. You can find the link to acquire the folder from the description. With the download folder open, click into folder three document samples, and this time click to open the document types InDesign file. So if we scroll down to the second page in this document, you will see the four key types of documents you can create in InDesign. When creating a document in InDesign, it will fall into one of the four key categories, single side, double sided, multiple slides and multiple spreads. Working in InDesign can be very simple or it can be very complicated. And at a quick glance here, you can see that I have a difficulty level going from easy to hard. Now, one can spend their whole design career in InDesign only scratching the surface of the type of things that can be done if one only works on documents like single-sided, double-sided and multiple slides. However, if designers work on more complicated documents with multiple spreads, then they will need to be aware of how to manage pages and lots of content. And this is where it can get very complicated. So if we look at each one of these categories, we can see the types of documents that can be created. One, single side. Looking at this first category, we can see the types of documents that will fall into the single side document category. The examples here are some of the most simple documents you can create in InDesign, and the difficulty level here is easy. Here we have a wide range of documents like posters, ID badges, certificates, and packaging labels, to name a few. Documents such as these will typically only be printed on one sheet, on one side, or displayed on one screen, so they will only require one surface to be designed. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm not going to go through every single document. As you can see, there is a lot here. If we come to the next page, we can see some document samples that fall into this first category. Now, you're free to explore each of these in your own time, but what I'll do in this video is go through some of the crucial document types you should be aware of to get a good idea of the ways documents can be set up and used. Now, we're about to open a few documents in InDesign. If you want to see them properly, you're going to need to have some of the fonts installed. Be sure to check the fonts page of the course PDF document to make sure all the course fonts are installed. So as you open each one of these documents, you should be able to follow along just fine. Also, keep an eye out in the top left of the document as we open them, as this will state which font is used in each document. So with the selection tool, let's come into the first category, select the image frame for the first item poster. Now I'll either come to the links panel and click edit original, or I'll hold alt on the keyboard and double click on the sample thumbnail, and the first example will open up in its own document. So here you can see in the work area and in the pages panel, it consists of just one A3 page. Now it really doesn't get more simple than this in InDesign. So back into the sample doc, next I'll select the item folder print. I'll either come to the links panel and click edit original, or I'll hold alt on the keyboard and double click on the sample thumbnail. And here we have something a little different. In this document, we have a die cut for a folder. In a document such as this, we would include die lines in magenta, which outline where the printer would need to cut and fold the document once printed. In the work area and in the pages panel, it consists of just one page set to a custom size. When printed and cut, this would indeed have a two side dimension. However, to prepare the document on a flat outline, we would need to do this on one side in InDesign. Like the poster, this is prepared on one sheet and once submitted to the printer, it would be carefully cut out and folded to make the finished folder. Back into the sample doc, I'll select the next item, social media skins, hold alt on the keyboard and double click on the sample thumbnail. And here we have something quite different. 
In this document, we have multiple pages to manage all the single key assets one can create for YouTube. Down here in the thumbnail area, we have multiple thumbnails that are linked to other documents. I'll hold Alt on the keyboard and double click on the sample thumbnail, and this will open in its own document. So instead of having a separate InDesign document for each asset, here we have one document that simply includes single side pages for assets like a profile image, profile header, and thumbnails. In the work area and in the pages panel, we have multiple pages with different dimensions, but nonetheless, all single side documents. From this one document, we can prepare our single side graphics for social media, or we can use it as a way to contain and navigate other InDesign documents such as thumbnails. When working in single side documents in InDesign, it can be as simple as an A3 poster, or it can be a little bit more complicated, for example, when using social media, where we can have different sized canvas areas and include links inside. If you explore some of the other documents in this category, you will see they are pretty much set up the same, set on a single page. Two, double-sided. So looking at the second category, we can see the types of documents that will fall into the double-sided document category. And the difficulty level here is medium. Here we have documents like business cards, pamphlets, bookmarks, menus, letterheads, and book covers to name a few. The examples here, again, are some of the most simple documents you can create in InDesign. Documents such as these will be prepared for double-sided printing, and unlike the first examples, will require layered for two sides. If we scroll down to the next page, we can see some document samples that fall into this second category. So I'll select the first item, business card. I'll hold Alt on the keyboard and double click on the sample thumbnail. And here we are looking at a relatively simple document which consists of just two pages. For this document, you can see we have two custom page sizes in my pages panel, one for the front and one for the back. Here you can see that the two pages are sitting next to each other to be clearly seen at a glance. Again, one of the most simple documents you may encounter in InDesign. Back into the sample doc, where things start to get a little bit more complex with greetings cards, leaflets, and pamphlets. Again, these are double-sided prints, but will require folds. I'll select the next item, leaflet, I'll hold Alt on the keyboard and double click on the sample thumbnail. And here we are looking at a document which consists of four pages, but in two page spreads. This is a common layout for a simple leaflet. In the pages panel, we can see four pages, but this time composed in spreads. Page one and two are positioned together in a spread and page three and four are together in a spread below. A document set up like this will make it easy to export the spreads and for the printer to see the lines where to fold the document down the middle. Back into the sample doc, I'll select the next item, pamphlet. I'll hold Alt on the keyboard and double click on the sample thumbnail. And here we are looking at a slightly different document. Here we have a pamphlet document which consists of six pages set across two spreads. Similar to the leaflet, this document will require two folds instead of one and contain more content. In the pages panel, we can see that the document consists of six pages across two spreads. Three pages for one side and three pages for another. Again, a document set up like this will make it easy to export each spread and for a printer to see the lines where to fold the document. If you explore some other documents in this category, you will see that they are set up pretty much in the same way, some with and some without folds. Three, multiple slides. So looking at the third category, we can see the type of documents that will fall into the multiple slide document category. And the difficulty level here is again medium. Here we have documents like keynotes, presentations, mood boards, social carousel posts, portfolios, calendars, and eBooks to name a few. The examples here again are relatively simple documents you can create in InDesign. However, these documents tend to have a lot more content which will flow across multiple slides and may either be presented on screen or printed out on paper, so it will require a lot more formatting. If we scroll down to the next page, we can see some document samples that fall into this third category. I'll select the item guidelines. I'll hold Alt on the keyboard and double click on the sample thumbnail. And here is a very common document that designers may create using InDesign. This is an example of a brand guidelines document ideal for viewing on screen. Here we see single 16 by nine pages stacked on top of each other, containing over 20 slides. And in the pages panel, we can see these are individual pages. In this document, we can see there are parent pages present and applied to the pages below. We have sections applied and we have paragraphs and character styles applied. This is where some of the more advanced features of InDesign are used to manage multiple pages and larger volumes of content. 
A document like this would be easily exported as a PDF and shared with the client and other designers where it could be mainly viewed on screen, but could also be printed out. Back into the sample doc, I'll select the next item, interactive presentation. I'll hold Alt on the keyboard and double click on the sample thumbnail. And here we're looking at another slide document, at this time for a digital presentation, which consists of over 10 pages. For this document, again, we see single 16 by nine pages stacked on top of each other, ideal for viewing on screen. And like with the previous document, we can see there are parent pages present. We have paragraph and character styles included. And this time we also have a breadcrumb menu at the top of each page where hyperlinks are included. This document is designed to be strictly digital and exported as an interactive PDF. When exported and viewed in Acrobat Reader, the hyperlinks would allow the viewer to click the top buttons and navigate the document easily. Documents like these are also created in apps like PowerPoint in Keynote. InDesign is also extremely powerful and useful for creating screen presentations where you can use the flexible and powerful formatting features and also include added interactive elements that might not be possible in apps like PowerPoint or Keynote. So back into the sample doc, I'll select the next item, carousel post. I'll hold Alt on the keyboard, double click on the sample thumbnail, and here we have a very different layout. This time we are looking at a document for social media static and carousel posts. On the top row, we have four square pages set up with space between each individual post. In the pages panel, we can see on the top row, we have four pages. On the second row, we have the same content, but this time across four landscape pages with different dimensions. Below these, we have two examples of carousel posts where we have a square post and a landscape carousel post. These have been prepared to enable seamless design across each page with the ability to export them all out as individual JPEGs to be used on social media as carousel posts. In the pages panel, we can see the bottom two rows. We have four pages each next to each other. So a single document here with multiple pages, however, set up with different page dimensions. So back into the sample doc, I'll select the next item calendar. I'll hold Alt on the keyboard, double click on the sample thumbnail, and this time we have a document intended strictly for print. Like the guidelines and presentation documents, this one again is set up on multiple slides, set to a custom document size. In the pages panel, we can see the pages set up individually, and when exported, these slides will be on individual pages and printed back to back to make a document that can be bound from the top and turned over. So a good example of a document with multiple slides intended for print as opposed to digital. If you explore some of the other documents in this category, you will see they are set up pretty much the same, though with different page sizes. Four, multiple spreads. So looking at the fourth category, we can see the type of documents that will fall into the multiple spreads document category, and the difficulty level here is hard. So this is where things start to get a lot more complex. Here we have documents like booklets, magazines, newspapers, user manuals, and novels, to name a few. The examples here are some of the most complicated documents you can create in InDesign. Documents such as these can include multiple page spreads, anything from four spreads up to a hundred and beyond. Documents like these will include all the advanced features like parent pages, sections, character, paragraph, and object styles. If we scroll down to the next page, we can see some document samples that fall into the last category. I'll select the item report. I'll hold Alt on the keyboard and double click on the sample thumbnail. And here we are looking at a print document for a report that consists of many spreads. Now, unlike the previous documents, this document has been set up using facing pages, where at the start, we can see the first page is a simple page for the cover. The last page is a single page for the back cover with all the spreads in between. If we look in the pages panel, we can see the layout reflected here with the pages next to each other and the single page at the top and the bottom. This is a very common setup when working with documents for print that include multiple spreads. Documents like this will typically use all the advanced features of InDesign to manage parent pages, styles, sections, and so on. Back into the sample doc, I'll select the next item, Novel. I'll hold Alt on the keyboard, double click on the sample thumbnail, and here we have a classic layout for a book design. As simple as a book layout can appear, a layout like this will still use a lot of the formatting features in InDesign to manage and organize the vast amount of content included inside. Looking in the pages panel, again, we can see we are using facing pages. You may also notice that the cover is not present in this document. That is because the book cover design will typically be created in a separate document using a different document setup. Back in the sample doc, I'll select the next item, booklet. 
I'll hold Alt on the keyboard, double click on the sample thumbnail, and here we have another document containing multiple spreads, but this time we see something different. Unlike the first two documents that use facing pages to manage the document, in this example, we're not using facing pages. Here, the pages have been set up differently. As opposed to the front page at the top and the back page at the bottom, this is another approach one can take when creating a document with multiple spreads, where the front and back cover will be set on a single spread at the top. Looking in the pages panel, we can see the spreads. So when working with documents with multiple spreads, it really doesn't change from this sort of setup. There may be different page sizes, but when working with multiple spreads, you will always be working towards this paradigm. If you explore some of the other documents in this category, you will see they are all set up pretty much the same, where there'll be a page on the left and a page on the right with a fold down the middle. And if you're working with facing pages, you'll have one page at the top and one page at the bottom. So as we progress in this course, we're going to be coming back to various document types and going deeper to understand the tools and features that we can use to set up, format, and manage content effectively. So now we are all clued up on the potential InDesign has to offer. It's now time to move on to the next subject. So see you in the next video.